One of my favorite versions of this, it's not age progressed images, but it's just a vividness exercise. Researchers went to women in rural Kenya and had them engage in this sort of like deep vividness exercise where they're really fully imagining what their future selves will look like. And they found that these women were considerably more likely to save and they were more likely to take preventative health actions for their kids. So chlorinate their water, which is great for pre preventing um, stomach illnesses um, relative to say like a control group. Uh, and the, the, the gist there again is that we're making that future self more vivid, more emotional, someone I can really attach to. Transitioning a bit to some maybe practical applications that people can use. Um, you know, I, I guess how can people think in some deeper ways about what will happen to us as time unfolds? Like in what way can we have conversations with our future selves to just promote some better decisions, both or I don't know, better decisions is the right way, but decisions that are more positive for both the now and the future. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I think I've grappled a lot with that, like better decision. Like I saw you sort of say, how do I describe it? the way that I think about this for what it's worth is decisions where I'm closing the gap between the things that I intend to do and what I actually do. Like those are quote unquote better decisions, right? Um, if we want to be practical about it, um, I think you first have to recognize, you know, the sort of classes of decisions. Sometimes we have decisions that are sort of these big weighty decisions. Um, should I, you know, change my estate plan? Um, should I rebalance my portfolio? Should I switch careers? You know, should I move cities? These are big single shot decisions. It's not that they can't be undone, but they're the types of things that we don't do all that frequently. Um, in those particular cases, I think it may make sense to really have a sort of, if I can conversation with your future self. Um, one exercise I love is to write a letter to your future self and then write a letter back from your future self. And, you know, it creates this sense that you're stepping into the shoes of your future self. I know some advisors do what's called the two chairs exercise where you, you know, have people literally sit in a chair and there's an empty chair across from them and they're talking to their future self and then they switch seats and then they talk back to their current self, you know, through the lens of their future self. There's something that's possibly a little cheesy about that, but also I think, you know, could work. So it, that sort of conversation is the type of thing that I think a lot of people implicitly do. A lot of people implicitly say, yeah, I'm thinking about my future, but there's a difference between thinking about your future and actually having a conversation with your future self, because you can think about your future in a really abstract surface level way, but a conversation dials up the vividness. Now, after that, then there's a whole other class of decisions, which are the daily ones or the more than daily ones. You know, if I'm debating if I'm trying to figure out like how best to spend my money or how to eat healthy or whether to exercise, these are decisions that come up multiple times a day, multiple times a week and so on there. You know, I'm not so sure that sort of like every time I get served an ad on social media to buy something, I should have a conversation with my future self about whether to buy it or not. <laughs> Cause I think that would get old really fast. So, you know, in the book I talk about a whole sort of other class of solutions where, you know, for instance, we try to engage in what's known as commitment devices, where we try to put guardrails on our behavior so that we do more of the things that we say we want to do. I'm happy to elaborate on that, but that I think it's just important to sort of say, like, the, you know, let's, let's consider the type of decision first. Well, I think that was sort of transitioning into what I was going to ask you next, because, you know, I think personal finance advice has transitioned, um, you know, somewhat gradually since the financial crisis and certainly since the pandemic. Uh, where you're basically supposed to just torture your current self in favor of your future self. And right. so you, you mentioned, um, you know, healthy eating, but, or financial decisions, you don't want the current self to be the one that's make, experiencing all the pain and commitment right. devices. Yeah. I'd love if you dive into that, any other things that you think can help make the behaviors in the present a little easier on us. Yeah. I think this is a really important point and it's something, it's something I worry gets missed sometimes. You know, I think, you look at the title of my book or you sort of get a surface level view of it. It may sound as if like it's time to buckle, you know, buckle down, batten down the hatches and, you know, <laughs> torture yourself now so that things are better later. And that's really not the right. I don't think that's the right perspective. You know, first off, you, you said it. Um, we can get into these situations where it's always present me who's sacrificing for current or for future me. 
Um, that's not great. That's not a great situation to be in because it, you know, it'd be like, again, to go back to the relationship, it goes, it's a relationship where you're the one who's always sacrificing for your spouse or your partner. Nobody wants to do that. You know, I mean, I know you add up how much percentage of the housework, um, married partners do, and it's like 120%. But, um, you know, <laughs> you, you, nonetheless, if we can figure out ways to make those present day sacrifices feel easier, then suddenly the sort of perspective shifts, the mindset shifts, you know, so one example is to break any big thing down into smaller and smaller pieces. Um, you know, literally it's not, it's not about setting up my estate plan, but it's about, you know, like I need to find a time to call somebody to do this. Like, I'm just going to start with that. Like that's a lot easier to do than like the big plan, you know? Um, I, th there's another element of this too, which is, uh, that we should also sort of think about ways to try to achieve the same goals that we want now without cutting back on the sort of things that matter to us most. That's a little abstract. I mean, there's a, there's a anecdote that came up when I was working on the book. I talked to one of my friends who's a behavioral scientist, Janet Schwartz. She had gone to Coney Island right around the time that New York state started putting up calorie labels. She'd gone with a couple of her friends. What do you do when you go there? You get, you know, you get a hot dog. We're recording this like shortly after July 4th. And you know, so Coney Island hot dogs are top of mind. Um, you get a hot dog, you get fries. And she was sort of dismayed to find out that the fries were like 1,100 calories. Um, so she and her friends split the fries three ways. They each got a hot dog. They split the fries. You know, it's really interesting about this is that if you have a, let's say you have an overall goal of reducing your calorie intake you could do that by splitting the hot dog. That would be crazy. Like who would go there and have a third of a hot dog and a whole thing of fries, right? Um, so what's nice about this is that I've sort of thought about this as like a, you know, attack the sides, attack the periphery, but keep the core. You know, she, she did another study where she partnered with a fast food restaurant that asked people if they wanted to get half of a side of fried rice. And like a third of people said yes. You pay the same amount, but it's great. You know, you, you still get your orange chicken, the high calorie, you know, high sugar meal that you came for, but you maybe you didn't consume as many calories because you got a half a side of fried rice, which is also really high calorie. So, you know, I, I would almost put it out as a challenge to say, if there's sort of self-control dilemmas we have, are there ways to both cut back, but keep more of the thing that we really like doing?